Do you like challenges? Then here's one for you. You have some complicated math expressions on screen. Just pause the video and see if you can simplify them into their simplest forms. Done? Or did you struggle to even put pen to paper? Hi, my name is Shweta and I'm the lead quant SME at eGMAT. Today, I will help you remove all this fear that many GMAT aspirants attach to scary math expressions as we saw by using the process skill of simplify, which is one of the seven process skills that anybody who aims for a Q50 needs to master. By the end of this video, you will have simplified a very complicated math expression with me and you will also have correctly solved a very hard question that I'm going to show you an official OG advanced question and then I will give you two practice questions to simplify this is how they look at the end so stay tuned and you'll have all of this now here is the hard question that I talked about just pause the video and give this a shot all right I hope you tried now this question it can be crazy hard or it can be really simple all depending on your comfort with one process skill, the process skill of simplify. Now this question has a very low accuracy. Let me actually give you the data that, that the accuracy data for this one. So the correct answer here is choice B and only 40% of all test takers get this question correct. That proves how difficult people are finding this. Now the 60% that's getting this wrong why is that happening? That's a huge percentage. It's because they are unable to simplify things. So here in this case, let's see how we can simplify this scary looking question and take things back in our control. Well, we will start right from the question stem. This is what you have. Now again, you can read, you can pause and try again if you'd like to. But since you've given it a shot, let's just dive right in. So first, let's read the stem carefully. What does it say? For each positive integer, each positive integer, 1, 2, 3, so on, let a k be defined this way, 1 plus 1 upon k plus 1. Then is the product a1, a2, all the way till a n, is this product an integer? Hmm. So again, positive integer, 1, 2, 3 is what I have, and then a k is given in terms of k. What does this mean? It means that each term of this sequence can be determined for every k, right? And what do I need? I need to see if the product of these terms then, first term, second term till the nth term, if this product, you know, is, is something which is an integer or not. So that's what I need to ultimately determine. Now again, if you are intimidated by it, you're not alone. Test takers will not throw anything at you that you're not equipped to handle. Okay, so when the complete problem seems so daunting, what do we do? We break it down piece by piece and we simplify. Now let's just attack this slightly slowly and then see how this happens, how this becomes simple. So a k, hmm, so 1 plus 1 upon k plus 1 and again k will keep changing, it's for all positive integers, right? So say I think about k equal to 1 first. So a k, which is the first term, is going to be 1 upon 1 plus 1, I'm just putting k equal to 1, so this is 1 plus 1 upon 2. And if you add this, it's going to be 3 over 2. That's it. Similarly, you can get the second term by putting k equal to 2. So a2 is going to be 1 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1. This time I'm just putting 2 in place of k. You do the addition, you get 4 by 3. Now this way you can keep continuing. I'm just going to quickly write down the next term. You can actually pause the video and continue this on your own. You should be comfortable with these calculations. Now till the end, just look at what the last term is in the product. The last term is a n. Now just to be able to see the pattern, I'm going to I'm going to write the last two terms, okay? So I am going to see what happens if k is n minus 1, just one term before the last. So in that case, the n minus 1th term is 1 plus 1 upon n minus 1 plus 1, and then the 1 and the minus 1 cancel out. Let me just write it here where all of the other terms are. And finally, for the last one, k equal to n, you just have 1 plus 1 upon n plus 1. Okay, let's just put that properly here. And that's it. You do the final addition here in the final steps. That's what we should have. So this is n plus 1 upon n. 
and similarly what just what does your last one become that's n plus 2 upon n plus 1 okay i have just written the terms right now i've just written what a1 is a2 is all the way till an i still have not understood i still have not written the product that was asked right look here it's the product of these terms that you want so let's just write down the product now look it's 3 by 2 times 4 by 3 times 5 by 4 keep going all the way till the end last two terms are these now look very carefully if you just observe you'll find something that's going to make this super simple you will see that you can cancel out the 3 from the first term with the 3 in the second one so one numerator cancels out the next denominator similarly let's use a different color this 4 gets cancelled out with the next 4 and so on actually every numerator will be cancelled by the denominator of the next term this way what will happen is till the end this n plus 1 will also cancel out with the last n plus 1 and what does that really leave you with in that case just notice very carefully this n will be cancelled by the previous numerator you are only and only left with n plus 2 over 2 hmm one second n plus 2 over 2 let me show you where this is the n plus 2 that ultimately remains in the numerator and this is the 2 that ultimately remains in the denominator now this is my product what's the question asking is the product an integer hmm so is n plus 2 over 2 an integer how is that going to happen just think about this nice and slow how is n plus 2 upon 2 going to be an integer so n plus 2 right now is being divided by something by 2 so if it's an integer let me just write the question is this an integer so what this means for us is is my one second is n plus 2 divisible by 2 that's when the result is going to be an integer now when is this divisible by 2 when n plus 2 is even so is n plus 2 even now further on you can actually say is n even because 2 is also an even number so that's not going to really change anything now this is the final simplified version of the complicated question stem that you saw let me take you back there this is the original question stem right here is the product this 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 an integer but what has it become now is n even now with this you're going to see how the question itself really starts looking super super simple before we move on please tell me how are you enjoying the video so far hit the like button if you're having fun also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to get more such high quality content that will help you in your preparation journey now another thing is i would love to see your comments about how you think we can make this experience better for you i look forward to all of that for now let's continue so this is what you have so this version is your before this is how the question looked earlier this is how it looks now this is the after version just look at these two tell me is this new question as intimidating as the earlier one it's not try solving it you can solve it pause the video try solving this version you will see that now really the statements don't have much to do this stem itself was the crazy part well understand that gmat test takers will never throw anything at you that's outside the conceptual knowledge that you're supposed to have they're not just suddenly going to start testing rocket science no so when things seem alien to you it's not because they really are alien it's just because you don't know how to simplify simplify let's actually solve it together also so what are we going to do let's see my new question stem is what i have put okay so is n even now i want to see if from the first statement i can answer this question let's can make this bigger okay so is n even and we're given that n plus 1 is a multiple of 3 hmm so being a multiple of 3 you can say n plus 1 is equal to 3 times something say 3a where a is some integer so n is going to be 3a minus 1 now is n even can i tell that here no look if my a is even 
then 3 times a is 3 times something even so the result is even when you subtract 1 from it the result here is odd but on the other side say a is odd then your 3 is being multiplied with an odd number 3 times odd and the result in this case will be odd only so odd minus 1 eventually is going to give you even so i just showed you how in this case you can't tell whether n is even or odd so this statement alone is insufficient and so let's look at the choices that we have so if you have a b c d e since statement one alone is insufficient you reject choices a and d so you're left with three choices and what do you need you need to look at the second statement now so let's see so this is what you have Again, same question stem. I've removed statement one from here so that you're, you're not, you're, you don't drag anything from there. That's a common mistake people make, but you be very careful. So n is a multiple of two. Oh, wow. n is a multiple of two exactly means that n is even. And this is precisely what my stem is. And this statement then is the easiest statement to ever judge. This is sufficient. Let me take you back to the same choices yes so since now i know my statement 2 is sufficient alone my correct answer is choice b and that's it let's summarize all of this for you nicely these are your takeaways never never let complicated expressions scare you i know that the first expression we get is this but it can simply turn into a smile if you just follow the step-by-step -step simplification that I tried to show you here. Whenever, for example, in the question that you saw here, it was a sequence that you were dealing with. So every time you're dealing with a sequence and you know, in a general form, just write down some terms there. First term, second term, just write some of them and you'll soon be able to see a pattern. In this case, also see how you could cancel one numerator with the next denominator. It happened because you wrote things down. Nothing happens just in the head. And then just focus on what the question is asking here it was asking the product we wrote down the product and then we could see how beautifully it really just gets simplified now remember the practice questions i told you about i have not forgotten i hope you also remember them these are the questions that you need to solve so you are going to put your answers in the comments let me give you a format for these so for any positive integer k tk is this thing simplify the product all you're going to do is write down the final simplified version so you'll just write down answers like this answers you write one and whatever your simplified expression is you write two and whatever your simplified expression is that's it i'm going to evaluate every single response and i'll also be responding to all questions that you people might have confusions and everything just feel free to post it and stay tuned to the channel for more such content i'll see you next time happy learning